Ladies and gentlemen, according to statistics, North Americans spend almost 30 hours a week watching television, and psychiatrists are becoming worried. They believe overindulgence in watching TV can lead to addiction. Some even believe there are many people who are actually hooked on television, people who can't help themselves, they've got to watch it. This is the story of one of them. <laughs> I was a TV addict. <laughs> The story of a man's fight against the demon television. Based on the best-selling thriller, I was a pusher for Panasonic. Hi. Tonight I want to tell you the harrowing story of a man who became a slave to the television habit. I know this is true because it happened to me. Sound like a nightmare. But I want you to know about it so you won't become what I became. A TV junkie. A man who couldn't live without television. <laughs> it all began one day when I met Frank for lunch. He's a doctor and he asked me to see him because he was worried about me working so hard. Oh, hi, hi, Frank. Hi, John. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> My work's just been piling up on me. I've got this research to prepare, and I've got all these lectures I have to write and, and, and papers to mark. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, that's why I wanted to have lunch with you. Oh? John, you've been working too hard, and it's beginning to show. What are you talking about? Will you put that down? Look, I'm a doctor, and if you continue in this way, you are heading for disaster. Continue in what way? Work, work, work. Seven days a week work without rest or relaxation. I tell you, it's beginning to show. What do you mean? All your colleagues at the university have noticed it. You're edgy. You're nervous. If somebody says something to you, you, you snap at them. That's ridiculous. Excuse me, sir. What do you want? <laughs> you like coming from the bar, sir? Uh, I'll have a martini. <laughs> you see? And what about last week? Last week, when you punched out Professor Mulholland? I lost my temper. But the woman is in her mid-70s. <laughs> she aggravated me. <laughs> Will you cut that out? <laughs> All this crunching celery. <laughs> Eat mashed potatoes. See, John, you're starting to crack up. All right, I admit it. I, I, I am getting kind of jumpy. But, but what can I do about it? You can ease up. Stop working all the time. What's the last movie you saw? Uh, Ben-Hur. <laughs> last movie was Ben-Hur? You know how long ago that was? Charlton Heston was just a kid. Who's Charlton Heston? <laughs> he played Ben-Hur. He did not. That was Raymond Navarro. <laughs> Raymond Navarro? And the other guy in the other chariot was Dustin Barnum. John, that was a silent movie. Excuse me, sir. Ah! <laughs> Your martini. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll have another. <laughs> well, there you go, John. You really need help bad. I guess so, but what can I do about it? Anything that takes your mind off work. You mean like a hobby? Exactly. Well, okay, but not golf. Not after what it did to you. What are you talking about? I've seen you after a golf game. You're impossible. Well, it's an aggravating game. Then why do you play it? Because it relaxes me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so golf is out. There are other hobbies. Like what? Well, how about jogging? Nah. How about racquetball? Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> but 
John, it could be as simple as you spending the occasional evening at home and watching television. You mean the idiot box, the boob tube? Are you kidding? Besides, I don't have a television set. Are you joking? You don't have a set? No, I find it would interfere with my work. Well, that's what we're going to do right after lunch. What? You are going to buy a television set. That's how it all started. Well, there you are, John. Television. Take your pick. I walked forward and stared at the funny little box that was about to ruin my life and turn me into a video fiend. <laughs> hey, John, over here. Try this set. Here you are. Uh, what, what's this? Oh, that's the remote control unit. Hmm? To change the channels, you have to push these buttons. Oh. That's the button that turns the set on. Oh, okay. As the screen lit up, I became hypnotized. The images danced into my brain. I was in a strange new world, a world of sexy soap operas, game shows with greedy contestants, weird situation comedies, music videos, and people trying to sell me deodorants and beer. <laughs> Just as if it were in a dream, and suddenly... Well, John, how do you like television? <laughs> John? Hmm? I said, how do you like television? Hey, it's great! Gives me kind of a, a glow. <laughs> Makes me feel like I'm... Ten feet tall. I will try another channel. Well, well, just a minute. You've had four already. Just one more, you know, just to be sociable. <laughs> Take it easy. You're not used to this stuff. What are you talking about? Now, wait a minute. What's the matter? You, you've had enough. Don't tell me I've had enough. <laughs> Look, you can't handle this stuff like I can. Is that so? I can view you under the table anytime. Now, just a minute. <laughs> be of some help. Oh, hello, uh, Mr. Collins. Yeah. I just brought my friend in here to get a television set. Hey, that's a fascinating medium. You know something? I am really amazed by this. By the... Excuse me, but uh, do you think this man can handle television? Well, what do you mean? Well, look at his eyes. Good heavens. I made a terrible mistake. Look, look John, I'm, I'm sorry I brought you in here. Television is not for you. Come on, let's go. Is that so? Listen, buddy, I can take it or leave it, and I am taking it. What? Here you are. <laughs> Sunny day, when the clouds away. On my way to where the endless street. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sunny <laughs> Oh, I've seen it happen so many times. He's got the television habit. You mean he's hooked? On all channels. That's how it all started. I began watching television day and night. The morning show, the afternoon show, the late show, the late, late show, the late, late, late show, the late, 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 late show, which turned out to be the morning show, and I was back where I started. <laughs> I spent all my money on television. I bought everything. I bought a VCR, a, a, a decoder, a satellite dish, a descrambler. I bought every pay TV channel I could. I joined four video clubs, rented three movies a day, and I just sat in my apartment, never left it. Just sat there, watching, and switching, and switching, and watching. And when I wasn't watching, I was switching. When I wasn't switching, I was watching. And when I went to the bathroom, I taped. <laughs> John! <laughs> John! It's me, Frank. You've been in there for three weeks, now open up. John, 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 get away, I'm watching television. <laughs> What are you watching? It's a little white dot. I like it. <laughs> I've got to talk to you. All right. I'll put the little white dot on pause. What's on your mind? John, you've got to forget this craving for television. I'm putting you on pause. <laughs> now, listen to me. You've been sitting here for three weeks watching, watching. You're, you're sick. Wait a minute. 
Here comes the commercial. <laughs> he watches commercials. He's really sick. <laughs> got a better idea. Yes, sir. <laughs> Last week, I taped 60 minutes. So you taped 60 minutes. So, I play it back in slow motion. What for? So it lasts two hours. <laughs> Two and a half hours in Newfoundland. <laughs> Look, John. John. Uh-oh, bad reception. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, it's you. Will you get out of the way, please? <laughs> what? What? Hey, I explained something what? to you. What? 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 You what? have lost touch with reality. I have? Life for you has become a television show. You're right. My life has become a television show. Now, to preserve your sanity, you're going to have to give it up. Now, make up your mind. Mm -hmm. Make up your mind. I'll take curtain number three. <laughs> you see? Now, John, listen to me. You are one of three things. You're a simpleton, an idiot, or an out-and-out coop. And the survey said... <laughs> it. Now, I want you to see Dr. Gottlieb, okay? Uh, what channel is he on? <laughs> He's not on any channel. He's a psychiatrist. I'm not going to see any psychiatrist. I'm going to watch Miami Vice. Miami Vice. Don't you think I have that Don Johnson look? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, John. No more television for you. I don't care. I got a spare. No, you don't. <laughs> spare number two. That does it, John. I got a better idea. I'm taking away your television set. No, Frank. I'm no. sorry, John. No. No. Another sketch. <laughs> Something wrong. It won't work. It must be the picture tube. What am I going to do? I could have a show. I could have some television. What <laughs> <laughs> In a moment, the startling conclusion. And now, the startling conclusion of... I was a TV addict. I had become desperate for television. I went to the only place I could think of. That television store. Mr. Collins! Oh, it's you. What do you want? Can I watch television in your store? Excuse me, I'm afraid you're going to have to leave. No, I gotta have some television. Will you get out of my store? Please, anything. I'll watch a weather report. Stock market quotations. I'll even watch a paid political announcement. Get out of here. No, you can't make me. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you again. Get out of my store. No! You can't make me! Ah! Good heavens. What are you doing? That's a clothes dryer. I don't care. I'll watch anything, even laundry. No, 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 you Get can't. Out no, no, no. You again. No. All right. I'm going to tell the police on you. What do you mean? You're a lousy dealer. <laughs> Thank 
Excuse me, sir. Can, can you help a fella out? Oh, sure. Here you are. A quarter? I need three dollars and twenty-one cents. What for? I want to rent a movie. Beat it, weirdo. You're lucky I belong to a club. Otherwise, it would have cost you five bucks. <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> John? At last! Television! <laughs> it's me, Frank! Oh, uh, I thought you were a Muppet. <laughs> Look at you. Look what television has done to you. Bleary-eyed, helpless, a, a shell of a man. Is that so? I never felt better. Look at my hands. Steady as a rock. <laughs> That's not steady. Looks steady to me. <laughs> Miserable derelict, don't you know what's happened to you? I know. I'm hooked. I got a 26-inch Hitachi on my back. Admit it. Now, I'm going to take you home, John, and I'm going to get you all cleaned up. I tried to lick it. I tried everything. I even joined Television Anonymous. You can say Television Anonymous. That's right. Well, what's that? We meet twice a week and we get bombed. Look, John, I've made all the arrangements. You are going to see a psychiatrist. All right. Now, I made an appointment for you at 4.30. I'll miss the young and the restless. <laughs> That's just how it all happened, Doctor. Very interesting. Very interesting. You know something? You're a textbook case. Well, what exactly is wrong with me? I'll give it to you straight. You are a fruitcake. <laughs> Never mind the fancy medical jargon. I'm a layman. Give it to me in simple terms. All right. You've got videomania nervosa. <laughs> videomania nervosa? An extreme case of television addiction. Unless this man is treated immediately, he will go into the final phase, hallucinatory delirium. <laughs> well, what's that? Everything becomes totally confused. All the TV shows get mixed up in his mind. Ah! But, but that started already. Last night, I turned on my television set, and the Edmonton Oilers were playing the A-team. <laughs> Joan Collins was having an affair with Jerry Falwell, <laughs> and Cagney and Lacey arrested Jacques Cousteau for selling bad tuna to the Gallup and Gourmet. <laughs> And incidentally, that's why he was galloping. There is no time to lose. Treatment must be started immediately. <laughs> Doctor, will I be okay? Not to worry. We have the finest hospital in the country. Oh, good. Finest staff, mm -hmm. best equipment, mm -hmm. and I will arrange for a private room. Can I have a television set? Get him out of here. <laughs> Doctor, what do you think? Is he going to make it? He has a good chance if he follows my instructions. First of all, we remove all television. You mean cold turkey? <laughs> and then there's hypnosis, there's medication, there's therapy, counseling. And what happens then? Then, we give him this. Radio? <laughs> the shock treatment. It's just a matter of sweating it out. If he has the strength of character, he can lick it. Well, thank you very much, Doctor. You've been very helpful. Bye-bye. It was days later when I came to. I didn't know where I was, and I didn't know how I got there. As my eyes began to focus more clearly, I suddenly remembered. I was in that hospital the doctor had sent me to. And when I turned and saw the lettering on the door, I realized just where I was. I tried to get up, but I was too weak. I started to tremble. I needed television. Just one show. Then suddenly the room began to swim, and my tortured mind began to imagine that it was full of TV apparitions. They were all around me, haunting me, taunting me. I, I tried to make them go away. 
but they wouldn't go. And suddenly they changed to animals. <laughs> and then the awful truth dawned on me. I was having Disney spells. <laughs> well, what do you expect? I'm not well. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. Great. How... Is it really you? That's right. Can't believe it. You look wonderful. I feel wonderful. I'm, uh... I'm all cured, you know. You mean no more, uh... Oh, you can say it. No more television. I can take it or leave it. Oh, that's great. How did you do it? Well, it wasn't too bad. All I had to do was find a substitute. You know, something so interesting, it would keep me busy and take my mind off television. Johnny! Here, Johnny! Here we are! Well, I must toddle along. Lunch sometime? <laughs> Danielle. Laura! <laughs> Kiss me, Kate. Ah, <laughs> Deborah. <laughs> Here's to us. <laughs> and do me a favor. This time, don't try to cure me. 